Let's bow our heads. Father, once again, we are before you with the great, great anticipation for what you have in store for us. You always speak to us words of life, and uh, we are just ready for something amazing, something major to happen to us today because you tell us your, wor your word is like hammer. It is like a fire <laughs> uh, shut to our bones, and we want that to happen to us. Quicken our hearts, take away everything within us, every stress, every worry, every... Uh, normalcy in us that we are uh, just uh, fired up by your spirit through your word in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, what a great day to be in the house of the Lord. We are in part three, part number three of our Building a Great Life series. Um, and uh, I'm just so excited about this series. Uh, let's let's get right into into the series uh, as we come into part three uh, Jesus tells us this uh, very very profound very direct uh, in plain English for us to understand which is the theme of our series Matthew 2024 20, he says this that a great life is a life that is spent on what service a great life is a life that is spent on service uh, and here's Jesus speaking, Matthew 20, verse number 26, Matthew 20, 26. Uh, read that with me. Look it up on your app, right on the screen, or your, on your sermon outline. Let's read that together. It says what? Whoever wants to become great must be a servant to others. Now, how plain can it get? How plain can it get? So what is Jesus doing? He's equating greatness to what? service. And he gives us a definition. He says these two things go together. That greatness equals what? Service. Someone tells us that to somebody close to you. Greatness equals service. Greatness equals service. And so Jesus he has given us the secret to a great life. He said, I want to be great. I want to be famous. I want to become everything God wants, wants me to be. And yes, God wants you to be great things. So far, there have been about a dozen people who have gone through their spiritual gifts assessment. I have them here. And boy, the talent, the gifts, the abilities that God has embedded in his people, they are be above and beyond what anyone could do. And what a joy it is to discover who you are in Christ and to be in a place where you want to utilize that for his glory. Here's the secret to a great life. So the secret to a great life, Jesus is saying this, and let's all read that together, is this, that you are never going to be great until you learn to serve. Say that with me. You are never going to be great until you learn to serve. That greatness comes from service service now but god doesn't want us to serve in our own ability so you see when you were born you had natural abilities but when you accepted christ as your savior god gives you spiritual gifts and spiritual gifts are different than natural abilities you see, spiritual gifts is what you need in order to fulfill your destiny. Spiritual gifts is what you need to become what God created you for. Spiritual gifts is what you need to live out your life calling. They are the plus factor in your life. And so normally and naturally, everything you can do, it's like, oh yeah, big deal. But when you apply your spiritual gifts the way God wired you, it is that wow factor. It is, oh my gosh, I never thought of this. Oh my gosh, it is inspirational. It is encouraging. It is supernatural. It goes beyond your race, your gender, your education, the color of your skin, your experiences. It goes above and beyond your age. It is way. You can see a kid operating their spiritual gift and you open your mouth and say, where did that come from? You can see something says, how in the world that this person can, can come up with these abilities, these skills? How can they perform little Things become big when you are functioning in your spiritual gifts. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Amen. 
And God just doesn't want us to, to live a hum hum life. When it says you are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do great things, how in the world are you going to do it? You're not going to do it based on your human abilities. You're going to do it as you flow in your spiritual giftnesses. Here's what the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 4.10. 1 Peter 4.10. Please read that with me. It says this. It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Let's ponder over this verse a little bit. It says what? God has given each of you a great spiritual gift. Well, how many has God given a spiritual gift? Each of us. Every single person. Well, what's that gift? Is it just a hum-hum gift? Is it an ordinary gift? It's what? It's a great spiritual gift. Do you see that? God has given each of us a gift from what? His great variety of gifts. God has given each of us great gifts. You want to be great? You function in your spiritual gifts. Hello? I mean, I mean you want to take your life from ordinary to amazing? To awesome, you want to make a dent, a difference that even when you are dead and gone, the works that you perform live after you. You function and operate not in your natural abilities, but everything you do, you connect that with what? Your spiritual gift. So does it make sense to discover what your spiritual gift is? Because my gift is different than yours. God has given each and every one of us a very unique and different spiritual gift. And so if you don't know what your spiritual gift or don't care to know what they are, if you don't want to develop your spiritual gift, if you don't want to utilize and deploy your gifts, boy, what a waste of time. Because you're not going to have that oomph, that pizzazz. You're not going to have... That electricity in your life, if it's just based on your race, your gender, your education, your background, your age, your influence, your environment, if that's all it is, it's a what a poetry life. Because God never intended, he says he's given you what, God has given each of us what, a gift. What is that gift? They are spiritual gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. And he asked that, he says what, use them well to serve one another. In other words, our spiritual gifts will produce a job well done. In every area of your life, when you are in the exercise, in the deployment of your spiritual gift, the outcome, the verdict, when someone looks at that, he'll say, well done. This is an A plus job. This is an extraordinary job, not a B job, not a C job, not an F job. He says, when you use your spiritual gifts, it will be well done. So there are about a dozen reasons why you should use your spiritual gift. Of course, the key of it is all is that God says, your gift makes you great. Whoever wants to be great must be your servant. And so if, if, if that's not a clarion call that motivates you and drives you to want to serve Almighty God, then... Let me tell you more. So last week we discovered six of them. Today I want to give you the remaining six. There are about a dozen reasons why you should discover, you should dedicate your spiritual gifts, you should develop your spiritual gifts, and you should deploy them, utilize them for the service of God and his people. The first we looked at last week, let me run through this real quick. The first we looked at last week is this, is number one, is what I was created for what service. God says we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good, what God created you for service. Second also, sir, we are what? Saved for service. It says it's God who saved us and he what? He called us to do his holy work. God saved us not just to sit around and brag, hey, one day when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. No, he saved us to take to, to heaven. But in the meantime, on while we are waiting for him, he wants us to get in the business of what? Serving, serving, serving. A third reason why you ought to discover and deploy your spiritual gift is you were called by God to serve. If everyone of us there's a calling on our lives you're not just here to get a job buy nice things eat plantain and french fries die and that's the end of your life you are called to what sir amen the fourth reason why you ought to discover your spiritual gifts right is this is you are gifted 
for service. You are actually talented. God has, has given you res- the ability. You're gifted. You can do things very well. Tell somebody close to you. You can do things very well. You have a gift. So it's not like, well, I don't know what to do. I can't do nothing. You know, I'm, I'm a bomb. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. I'm crazy. I'm this and that. No, you're not. You're gifted. You are gifted. You have a gift from God from you. The Bible says God has given each of us, we saw that verse, a gift from his great variety of of spiritual gifts. Use it well to serve others. You are gifted. You are talented. Tell somebody, tell yourself, I am gifted. I am talented. Point to somebody. Point to somebody. Says, look, I am gifted and talented. I am looking at God's people here in Life and Salvation Ministry who are what? Gifted and talented. You are gifted for service. The fifth reason why you just ought to delve into this. We got two more weeks to go. And there are people who are going to be serving in specific ministries. With rotations and schedule going forward. And some of them will be risen up to be leaders. To be able to manage this. Because they have the divine ability to do that. The desire and the power to do that. The fifth reason is that God has commanded you to serve. There is no end if or but. If they are nice to me, I will serve. If somebody praises me, I will serve. You are commanded to serve whether somebody praises you or not. The Bible says our attitude should be like the Lord Jesus Christ who did not come to be served, but he came to what? To serve. Oh, the sixth reason is that, is that your church family needs, needs your service. Of. Your church family needs you. The Bible says all of us together are one body of Christ and each of us is separate and each of us are what? Uh, are necessary. You need it, you need it, you need it. Now, so we are created for services. We are saved to serve. We are called by God to serve. We've been gifted to serve. We are commanded to serve, and the church family needs us. Let's, let's, Let's get into the rest of it. So why should I discover, dedicate, develop, and deploy my spiritual gift? The seventh reason is this, is that service proves that I belong to Christ. Service proves that I belong to Christ. It says, by their fruits, ye shall know them. See, God bless you for the car you drove into church. If you have a bumper sticker with a fish on that, or Jesus is Lord, or any kind of acronym, if you're wearing a cross today, if you're holding a Bible today, whatever it is doesn't prove that you are a child of God. It is your service that demonstrates to the unsaved world that you are a child of God. Look at what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 7, verse 4. Please read that with me. Let's read that together. It says what? You are a part of the body of Christ, and now you belong to him who was raised from death in order that we might be useful in the service of God. You are saved by God. Jesus died for your sins and brought you into the membership of his own body to do what? So that you will be useful in the service of God. So no more pew warmers, no more seat sitters, no more spectators god saved us so that we'll be what useful in the what service of god so why did he die for you is it because of your looks no he died for you because he has a use for you in his body in his local church are you hearing what i'm telling you Glory to Almighty God. He said, why did he go to the pain, the torture, the torment? Why, why, why did he shed his blood for you? Now you know why he did that. He did that so that he will invite you to come and be a part of the Christian body. To do what? So that you will be useful. The word is what? Useful. So if your gift is service, you are out there greeting with a smile on your face. If your gift is usher and the time comes, you are out there passing the offering plate with joy. You prayed over the people who are going to give today and your gift is touching hearts. If your gift is hospitality, you are looking around for those who are sad, those who look like they are hurting, and you are calling them in the middle of the, of the week. You are sending them an encouraging word. You are praying for them. If they miss missed church a week or two, you say, my brother, my sister, I missed you. Where are you? You've got the gift of God. You've been useful. You've been what? Useful. Say that with me. Useful. He saved you so that you'll be what? Useful. Amen. Now, we're not useful if we are just, we come and sit, we say hi and bye and we go, Right? So we are saved when service proves that I belong to Christ, that I'm participating in the body of Christ. Do you know what they used to say in the old days? When somebody joined the New Testament church, 
and they welcome that person. They bring this person up to the front of the line. People are clapping and cheering them on. And this is what the minister will say. Welcome. Jesus Christ has now a new pair of eyes to see with your eyes. Jesus Christ had now, has now a new pair of ears to hear the hurts of others with your ears. Jesus has now a new pair of hands to help others with your hands. Jesus has a new heart to love others with, with your heart. Your ears are now Jesus' ears. Your eyes are now Jesus' eyes. Oh, somebody is nodding. Do you remember back in those days, anyone has been in church that long enough that they used to say that? Why did they say that? Because every believer, every child of God, it's, it's hard to be what? Useful in the service of Almighty God. It is all about ministry, not attendance. It's not how many people come to churches, how many people are serving God in the church is what Jesus looks at. Now, how many people are driving in, filling the pews, shouting amen, clapping your hands, and then going home and minding your own businesses? How many people looking around in the body of Christ, and how many people have been, what, useful in what? The service of Almighty God. The end reason why you ought to discover your spiritual gifts, you ought to dedicate it to the service of God, you've got to develop your spiritual gifts so that it becomes bright as a flame, and then what? Deploy that in the service of God and his people is this, is this what? Is serving others is the way to serve God. You cannot serve almighty God without serving people. To serve God is to serve mankind. And so here's what the Bible tells us in Colossians 3.23. It's a famous portion of scripture that you know. Oh, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's read that together. It says, whatever you do, stop right there. It says, what? whatever you do, it means everything you do. Whatever you do, do what? Work at it with all your heart. As what? Working for the Lord, not for human masters. For it is who? The Lord you are serving. So the reason you've got to utilize your spiritual gifts is everything you're doing, what? You're serving God. You're serving God. And he's gifted you and talented you, and he's got a Holy Spirit in you, and he's given you the ability to do that. And so you've got to what? Use it. Not for me. He said, look at these people. I know them. Why should I say hello to somebody I know all the time? Jesus wants you to say hello to them. Jesus wants you to hold the door for them. Jesus wants you to spend some time during the week. If you have the gift of faith, if you have the gift of prayer, when he tells you to pray for somebody, you forget about your problems and you intercede and pray for somebody because what? That's what Jesus is doing and Jesus wants you to be his representative. You are what? Ambassadors of Christ. If you get the, the, the gift of intercession, the gift of prayer, what do you do? You use that to pray for others and you watch God work in the life of people by your faith and the exercise of your spiritual gift. If God has given you the gift of encouragement, what should you do? Pat yourself on the back and say, I'm cute, I'm nice, I look hot, I am wonderful, I am great. No, you turn around and say, oh, man, nice pair of shoes. Wow, it's great to see you in church. You look really good. Boy, you've really taken good care of yourself. How are the family? Kids doing well? It was great seeing them the other day. Your job is not to just encourage yourself at work and because you are using your gift, using your gift to serve who? Others, and by serving others, you are serving Almighty God because it is the Lord you are serving. It is the Lord you are serving by serving others. Oh, Jesus said this in the Bible. He says, What do you do? He says, Whatever you do for others, you are doing it for who? He says, Even a cup of cold water that you, you, that you give to someone in my name is like doing it for me. Reason we ought to utilize our spiritual gifts is, is, is that we, we serve God as we serve others. Tell somebody close to you. You serve God as you serve others. Now, how many of you want to serve God? I mean, if I told you the governor of the state of Maryland or the president of the United States was coming here to this church, we are looking for people to serve. How many of you are going to raise your hands? How many of you are going to go to the store and buy something really nice? How many of you are going to make that day a special day? How many of you are going to take a picture and put it on Facebook or WhatsApp or just display it? I, I, look, look at me. I was here serving this person. Well, Jesus is right here in this place. Every time we show in here where two or three are gathered in my name, where is the Lord? He's right here. He says, you serve me. How? By serving others. Amen. You want to know your spiritual gifts because it proves that you belong to Christ. Because serving others is the way to serve God. You've got to know, develop, deploy your spiritual gifts because of this, then you owe everything to Christ. You owe everything to who? Christ. 
I owe it all to him. I owe it all to him. Who gave you your job? Who gave you your spouse? Who gave you your kids? The grandkids that you have, who gave it to you? The air you are breathing, who gave it to you? Where you, you woke up this morning, the bed you laid on, who gave it to you? Oxygen running through your nostrils, who gave it to you? There are a quarter million, 250,000 people died last night. You are weak. Why? Some of them are in the middle of doing something. Some of them are judges, doctors. They've got surgery lined up this morning. They didn't wake up to do it. Some of them had even cooked a meal. They were, some of them are going somewhere. They are traveling. They've got, they're in the middle of something. Some of them are, are, are inventing a cure. They are in the middle of something really important. And what? Their heart stopped. But the reason God woke you up this morning is not because of anything you've done, earned, or deserved. It's because of his favor, his grace. Therefore, you owe God a debt. You owe everything to Almighty God. And how can you repay the debt that God has given to you? The only thing he asks you is say, serve me, serve me, serve me, serve me. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Romans 12, 1, he says this. He says what? Because of God's great mercy to us. Can anybody say amen? Because of my life is a testament of God's great mercy upon me. Has God shown you great mercy? What should you do? Because of God's great mercy to us, this one. Oh, what? Offer yourself as a living sacrifice to God. How? Dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. You've got to exhaust yourself serving God in repayment of God's great mercy upon your life. You think you just had fun and you had the son or the daughter that you have. Go see people at fertility clinics. Fertility clinics wanting to have somebody call them mommy or daddy. You think you just had a big meal and you just laid down and poof. You did a great job and you had a child. Because of God's word. With mercy. And so what should you do? He says, offer your life as what? A living sacrifice to God, dedicated to what? His service. And so you step up and you say, look, I wasn't supposed to be here. Wasn't supposed to have the job that I have. Wasn't supposed to be able to pay my bills. Wasn't supposed. To... Do you know how many people are struggling for visa? Do you know how many people? From where we come from, do you know how many people would love to walk in your shoes? Are they less valuable than you and I? No. But God, God does what he does with what he chooses. It is all the free will of Almighty God. You cannot, you can't compare yourself to nobody. But when God has blessed you, you don't look over your shoulder and say, but, 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 but what about that? Oh, they have three cars and I don't have a car, so therefore God hasn't done great things for me. Really? Just look back at your life, how far you've come, and be thankful. The Bible says, count your blessings, name them one by one, see what God has done for you. Not for, don't look on the other side. The grass is always greener on the other side. But you can, the grass is greener where you water. The grass is greener where you appreciate. The, God, the grass is greener when you notice the great mercy of Almighty God. Can anybody say thank you, Jesus, for what I'm sharing with you this morning? And what should you do? What should you do? You say, I don't like this person. I don't like this church. I don't like this brother. This person is too known. This, oh, you, 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 do you want to complain? You think God looked at all of that before he, he, he just blessed you as much as he did and he's going to bless you more and more and more and more. He's not through with you. He said, he who began a good work in you. God right now is beginning a good work. He's continuous. He's going to finish some things that he has portioned for your life. He says, this is all I need. This is all I need. Offer your life. Offer your life. Dedicated to my service. Perhaps once a month, your job will be to greet people and you dress up like you are the person who is standing in a white house. Welcoming the Queen of England to come into the White House. You are just doing it with energy. Somebody shows up at the door. You hold the door. You say, good morning, my dear. How are you doing today? And you don't want anything in return because you've received more than you, des more than you deserve. Are you hearing what I'm sharing with you today? I went to a pastor's conference in California, and I saw this man, and he looked like a very distinguished man, 
standing right in the men's bathroom. And if you've been to these large conferences, you know when they give break, it's like we are lining up to go to the bathroom, right? Because you want to soak up everything. I mean, both the guys and the ladies' bathroom line is just right at the door. And I got there and I saw this guy, every third or fourth person who goes and pees, he's out there mopping the floor, he's out there cleaning stuff. He'll even wipe your feet, if some, wipe your shoes if something goes wrong. And I just took the time and said, sir, it's so amazing how you're serving with dignity, with joy. May I ask you, what do you do? He said, I'm a dentist. A dentist. I asked up his name. After I left, I Googled him. He's got this huge practice, huge practice. He's a partner in the dentist. His name is on the company. He's taking off his white cloak with his name tag DBS on the side. Customers can wait. He's mopping the floor, urine on the floor, mopping the floor, mopping the floor, mopping the floor because he realizes I have a gift of service. I have a gift of hospitality. I have a gift to give and I'm going to serve my God. There are people from out of town who have come to this church and it doesn't matter whether my name is Dr. So-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Before the eyes of God, I have been given so much because of God's great mercy for me. I'm going to take two hours, one hour in traffic, driving to that church, spending time in my ship. I sign up. I sign up. And at the next break, I will be cleaning urine in the men's bathroom because of God's great love for me. Because I owe it to Christ. If you want to know something about your pastor, I don't serve out of duty. I don't serve out of fear. I don't serve out of some kind of guilt. I don't serve out of anger. I serve out of gratitude. Why? Because I owe him my life. And you ought to serve out of gratitude. Why should you be grateful and serve God and serve God out of joy and serve God diligently, serve God with dedication? Why? He saved your life. It means you are going to live with Jesus forever. It, you ought to serve God because all your sins are forgiven. There is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You owe Jesus a debt of service. You ought to do this because right now, as you live until you close your eyes, he has guaranteed you his power in the present. And so because of that, you've got to serve him without delay, without hesitation. You've got to serve Almighty God. There's a tenth reason why you've got to discover, develop, and then deploy your spiritual gifts to serve others. Why is this? Because what? Service makes my life what? Meaningful. If you ever are bored in life, go serve somebody. Right? There's because there's what? More blessing in what? Giving than receiving. If you ever had a season of your life where it's like, man, there's no joke. I'm hearing bad news all the time. I mean, after we activate these ministries, if it's not your turn, call somebody and say, look, I want to serve this Sunday. Why? Because I want to give. Because God says, give and it shall be given to you. What? Good measure. Press down, shake it together, run over. The measure you give is what you, what you receive in turn. Because you're going to receive more than you've given. So if you want to receive more, then you got to give more. If you want to receive little, then you got to go give little. I was telling my wife the other day, I had an appointment uh, on Saturday, on Friday, on Friday. I was talking to the doctor. I said, that, you know, the happiest day of my life is Sunday. I have so much energy, so much joy, so much peace, so much power. It, it, it happens before I get here. I'm like a, a boxer waiting for the ring to, I just can't wait to get here. And I'm here and it's like, everything is like a rush, electricity. I am the most joyful, peaceful, courageous person. I am unstoppable. I mean, it's like I can fly. When I'm functioning in my spiritual gift, I go home, it's like I'm a talkative. I just can't stand still. I'm all bounced up. When you are operating in your spiritual gift, when you are in a place of service, you have meaning and purpose in your life. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Look, look, 
at what Jesus tells us in Mark, the book of Mark, St. Mark chapter 8, verse 35. St. Mark chapter 8, verse 35. This is, a, this, is a, this, is, this is a family portion of scripture. Let's read that together. What is Jesus saying? He says what? If you try to hang on to your life, you will what? Lose it. You say, I don't want to be changed. I don't, I just, that's the way I am. That's the way I grew up. That's the way my mama treated things. That's the way I, he says, you're going to lose it. If you just want to be stuck in your ways. You mean stuck to tradition, stuck to this world order, stuck to your race. He said, that's what a man should do. That's what a woman should do. A man, you ought to sit down for a woman to save you. A woman, you just ought to sit down, cross your legs, and wait for everybody to bow to you. He says, you want to keep your life, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. There's always a bat, right? And that's when wisdom sets in, right? He says, but if you want, give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will know what it means to what to really live. How many of you want to know what it means to really live? If you give up your life, you forget about your race, your education, your age, your gender, your status, how old you are. You just throw that on the line. You serve your wife, you serve your kids, you serve your church, you serve your co-workers, you serve humanity. You give up your life. Give up your life. You will know what it really means to live. Fulfillment, satisfaction. The secret to greatness is laying your life down for people. And when you do that, you get more than what you've given. So if you're looking for satisfaction, enjoyment, if you're looking for meaning, meaningfulness in the things of this world, they don't last. They promise and fail. But the thing that gets your heart buzz and the things that puts your heart on fire is service. How many of you have served somebody at great cost? You've st stood up all night cooking for your child. So you promised them, I will be there. You drove a long while. You took time out of work, and you spent time with somebody at a hospital. You worked so hard, and you took that money, and God laid it on your heart, and you gave it to somebody who was in need. Forsook your own and help someone else. How many of you really found meaning and satisfaction and joy out of doing that? It happens all the time. You find meaning in service. Oh, look at what the Bible tells us. Look at what the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. It says what? Stand firm and be what? Tell somebody close to you. Stand firm and be steady. He says, how can I be steady? How can I be steady in this wishy-washy world? How can I stand firm? How can I be predictable in life? Stand firm and steady. That's a measured life. That's a purpose-driven life, right? If you are firm and steady, glory to God. This is the recipe of joy, of peace, when you are firm and what? Steady. A firm and steady person is what? Peaceful, right? The opposite of that is what? No joy. You have no life. So how can you do it? Let's read on. Let's read on. He says, he says what? Keep, he says, here's how you do that. You what? You keep busy always in your work for the Lord since you know that nothing you do in the Lord's service is ever useless. That's how you stand firm and you are steady. You keep busy working for God. What time is it? When am I going to serve? You say, sister, if you can't serve that Sunday, let me know and I will take your place with joy. You're doing it so much that the team leader will say, oh, please, let her serve. That's her turn. Next week is yours. Every time somebody is serving, you are taking their place. Let them also enjoy the blessing of serving Jesus right here in the house of the Lord. Keep busy. Can you be busy using your spiritual gifts? Can you be busy using the talents, the abilities that God has given you to serve? Can you do that? He says, when you do that, the blessing, the value out of that is you have a steady life. Unmovable. Un the gossipers can never get to you. The critics can never move. You will be unmovable, unshakable. Why? Because you are busy serving Almighty God. You get down and says, oh, this is what I got to do. I got to pray for somebody. I got to use my spiritual gifts. Yeah. I got to do this. I got to be in church on Sunday. My job is, I mean, the helps ministry. And I got to go to church, make sure everything is lined up. Everything is okay. Come in here, you check the bathrooms, it's lined up, the chairs are all put in place. Even though they're clean, they're clean, you're just looking over, over the shoulders to make sure it's done. You get off work, where am I going? I gotta stop by the church and put a few things together. 
So, Pastor, anything I can do to help on Sunday? Do you have the programs ready? Let me go ahead and load in the system so that when we experience it today, it will never happen. I got it, Pastor. Go ahead and put yeah, it's right there. It's in that lockbox. Here's the code. You have the code. You come in, bam. You just put it all together. You have the gift. You have the gift of craftsmanship. You can use your hand. God's giving you a tongue. You use that. When people show up, it's there. It's done. Right? That gives you what? Steadiness. Steadiness. You are busy in the work of the Lord. Then you can go back and watch all those YouTube movies. They will still be there. They will still be what? See, I can't do it. I'm watching a YouTube movie. <laughs> Glory to God. There's 11 reasons. There's 11 reasons why, my brother, my sister, you've got to discover your spiritual gifts. Don't leave this world without knowing what God put in you and why he called you and why he's blessed you so much. Don't leave this world without knowing your spiritual gifts. Here's why. Because when you stand before God, you'll be held accountable. You'll be held accountable for the gifts that he gave you. Well, you remember the parable that Jesus said, he says, there's a, there a master who was going away, he called his servants and he gave them all gifts and talents and he came back. He says, the time of reckoning, the time of making accounts came. That time will come when you stand before Jesus. One day you will be, have to give a gift. What did you do with the gift of service? What did you do with the gift of hospitality? What did you do with the gift of wisdom? What did you do with the gift of knowledge? What did you do with the gift of leadership? What did you do with the gift of giving? What did you do? There are 24 plus gifts. God gave you about 8 or 10 or 12 of them and you just let it all languish. Because you were busy eating plantain <laughs> and peanuts. This is serious stuff that we're dealing with, right? This is week number three. I mean, we're spending three weeks really focusing on what? Service! Look at Romans 14, 12. Romans 14, 12. He says, it, well, it came, the, the, God, God can't speak any clearer to us. He says what? Each of us. How many of us? How many? You, me, 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 me. What's going to happen? Each of us will have to do what? Give a personal account to who? Not me, oh. Not your mother, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, not your boss. It's what? To who? Almighty God. Give an account for the gifts he's put in you. Give an account for the talent. Give an account for the opportunities he gave you to be able to serve God using your spiritual gifts. And you say, you know, I had a lot of bills and so I had to work to pay my bills. Wrong answer. I had a lot of problems, you know, I had a lot of friends, and every time I want to serve you, I have to go to this art door, and I have to make a trip out of town, I have to go buy a dress, I have to do this, and you know. Do you know that the devil can get you so busy to rob you of doing what's important in life? See, there are people today who have missed out on life's opportunities because they are busy. Too busy. If you are too busy for God, you are too busy to be used by God. You are too busy to be blessed by Almighty God. The opposite of that is you remember that I'm going to be held accountable for what God has given me. And so therefore, when I stand before him, I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. There's one more reason, one more reason we're going to pray. There's one more reason. I've been called by God to service. I've been saved for service. I've been created for service. I've been gifted for service. I'm commanded to serve others. My church family needs me. My service proves that I belong to God. Serving others is the way I serve Almighty God. I owe it all to Christ. Therefore, I've got to dedicate my life to serving God. Because service makes my life so joyful, so peaceful, so meaningful. Because I'll be held accountable for my service one day. And here's the icing on the cake. Here's the big machismo. Here is the big league benefit why you ought to really run and dedicate your life to serving God. Is this because you'll be what? Rewarded for eternity. When you go to heaven and you see what God has in store for you based on what you did here on earth, everything that is happening in your life today is like living in a garbage can. Everything that you are stressing for, worrying about, chasing after here, as compared to what heaven has in store for you, for those who obediently are serving Almighty God, it's like, wow. Wow. Jesus tells us this in John 12, 26. He says what? Jesus is speaking. What did he say? My Father will honor anyone who serves you. Do you see the universe? Is it only pastors? Is it only doctors? Is it only governors? Is it only scientists? Are this, are, is this going to be only people who have won the Olympics or have the Nobel Prize winners? He says God will do what? Honor who? Anyone. What's the qualification? Anyone. 
Can anybody serve? Knowing that everybody has a spiritual gift, you can serve, and therefore you are a candidate to be what? And he said, well, I have no honor here. I have no honor. I don't have an office in my name. I don't own a house in my name. I don't have keys. To, don't worry about it all. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what's here. A man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of his possession. Do you know how God created us? God created us in such a way. Let's say, God, G Jesus said, it says, if we have food to eat and clothes to wear, we'll be content. Any, any, anything else does not add to your emotional quality. Do you believe that? The car that you drive doesn't add to your emotional quality. The food that you're going to eat at the church, I mean, you could just be eating, you know, just hot dog, right? And somebody could be eating steak. There is no difference between two of you. It doesn't add to your emotional well-being. It doesn't add to you. It doesn't add glory to God. It's called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. How many people are, 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 follow economics or philosophy here? At a certain point, nothing adds. You say, I look better because of the high heels I wear. You are lying to yourself. It adds nothing, nothing, zero to your emotional well-being. But here's something that you ought to work for, you ought to strive for, you ought to live for. What's going to happen to you when you close your eyes to this world? That's what ought to happen to you because that's going to be a big deal. It's not only going to be 40, 50, 60, 70 years that you're going to live. It's going to be billions and trillions and centuries and infinity years spending what? Being rewarded for what you did here on earth for whatever is left in front of you. The past is gone. Look at ahead. Press forward. Glory to God and make your life count from here on. Make it count. Make it count for Jesus. Make it count for eternity. Make it count for the rewards that you receive when you step up. Glory to God in heaven. Amen, 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 amen. amen. He says, my father will honor anyone who serves me. Does it make a difference if you just started today? Does it make a difference as long as you are serving Almighty God when you have the opportunity? And guess what? The opportunity will not always be there. Do it now when you have the chance. Guess what Jesus tells us in Matthew 25, 23. He tells us this parable lesson. He says, on that day, this is what you want to hear, and this is what I pray over your life. I pray that you are in a place where you are working for Jesus, you are serving Jesus, that you hear this remark. What He says what? Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been what? Faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. You've been what? Faithful with what? A few things. Can you be faithful with a few things for Jesus? Can you be faithful to a few things based on your spiritual giftedness? You take the assessment and it tells you you have the gift of administration and they put you on counting offerings. You're going to count the money like it is. <laughs> Glory to God. It is a million dollars. And you record it wherever you need to record it. Double check it. Complete the deposit envelope. Put it in and pray that, Father, we thank you that you've touched the hearts of people to be able to bless your work. We ask that you bless them, Lord God Almighty. You do it orderly. You put all the envelopes back in place. You put everything. You are using your gift of what? Administration to serve. You are being faithful with what? A few things. What God is asking you to do is it's, it's not going to break you. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to harm you. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Amen. Glory to Almighty God! Your gift shows that you have the gift of helps. Somebody here in this place who has the gift of helps. You say, great. Now, if you go on the church app, on every ministry, we have identified roles right there. I want to encourage you, when you leave here this week, take some time, go on the ministry tab right on our apps, click that, and then you're going to see something that says ministry roles. You say, Osha, what are the roles and responsibilities? You know, office of hospitality, member care, communion. Look at all these things. Look it down. So just for affect, just for affect, let's go ahead and read these 12 reasons aloud. It's right there on your app, right there on your sermon aloud. What are these 12 reasons why God wants you to serve? When God says, he who must be great 
who want to be great should be your servants. What is the incentive? What is it that encourages us to wonder? Why should we step forward and do more than we've ever done for Jesus? Twelve reasons why. Read that with me. It says, for one, what? I was created for service. Two, I am saved for service. Three, I've been called by God to serve. Four, I've been give, gifted for service. Reason number five, I am commanded to serve others. Reason number six, my church family needs my service. Number seven, it proves that I belong to Christ. Number eight, because serving others is the way to serve God. Number ten, because I owe everything to Christ. Number eleven, because service makes life meaningful. I, I miss one. Number eleven again, because I will be held accountable for my service. And this is the big machismo. This is the big league. The ground reason why we ought to dedicate God's spiritual gift for the service of mankind because my service will be rewarded for how long? Eternity! Amen, amen, amen. Give God a clap. Give God a shout. Oh, glory to Almighty God. You see, everything I've told you, two options. You can leave this church, get into your car, go home, and say, forget about it. Another message, I'm not gonna do anything about it. But you know very well that Jesus said that the blessing is not in the hearing, the blessing is in the what? You're not blessed for hearing the message and doing nothing about it. Or you can say, I wanna be like the 12 who today will receive their ministry recommendations and will be encouraged to go this week and think about it and pray about it and come back with a response and say, yeah, I'm ready to serve in this area. And I wanna add to that number. They are the activators. They've led the way. They've stepped forward. They've taken the challenge. And you've heard some of those who have come forward and says they're really excited about it. I, too, want to know who I am because every single one of us have been given a gift to help the body of Christ. And I don't want to be cheated, and I don't want to cheat anybody because I have something to offer. Do you, do you know you have something to offer? I don't want to be cheated because somebody else isn't stepping up and using their gifts to bless me and others. I want to step up and be counted. When the saints go marching in is the old hymnal. Oh Lord, where do I want to be? <laughs> I want to be counted. I want to be counted. That on my epitaph, yes, they may say this person went to the school, this had a number of children, but the most important thing I want to say about me is that I was a servant of the Most High God. The one thing that will remain forever is what? Service you've done for others. Make your life count. Let's make our life count. We bow your heads and pray. Bow your heads, please. Father, we just, I just want to thank you for getting us to this place in these last three weeks to focus on service. Helping us to prove that we belong to you and to be able to have this meaningful purpose for life that you have ordered for us and giving us all these guarantees how we will be rewarded and will be blessed. And Father, we just thank you, God. What a great God you are. Help us all, help us all to live in the light of eternity. Not to live in the here and now, but to live in the light of eternity. To look ahead of us and know this world is not our own. Very soon, like others who have gone before us, our time will come and we'll leave this world and we'll stand before you, that what we've done in the flesh, using the gifts you've put in us, will receive honor and rewards from you. And so thank you for the privilege that you've given us as a church to serve. You've allowed us to be able to create opportunities, communion ministry, children's ministry, events ministry, first responder ministry, greeter ministry, hospitality and member care ministry, live group leader or co-leader or host, pastoral helps, technical production ministry, prayer warrior ministry, usher ministry, worship ministry, all these ministries where you've gifted people, you've gifted people to serve in that. Oh God, we just thank you that this is a new day where people are going to be identified, not based on our past, but based on our spiritual gifts, on our abilities, on how you've honored each of us as we stand up and serve you with joy, with zeal, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray with me together. Let's all absorb some of these truths by prayer in our lives. Say, Jesus Christ, I want to be like you. I want to live a great life. I want my life to count. And so help me. 
find a place of service and ministry where I can dedicate the gifts that you've given me, where I can develop the gifts you've put in my heart as an expression of my love and my love and gratitude for all you've done for me. Today, with your help, I commit to serving you for the rest of my life. Help me to do it with love, with joy, and with dignity. Now let's take a moment here. Maybe you've accepted Christ as your Savior. What a great time, just before we receive communion, to express that to Jesus. Maybe you've not really made your decision sure. What a great day to do that. So pray with me. This prayer of salvation. Jesus, thank you for paying the price for my sins. I open my heart to you and I receive your free gift of salvation and forgiveness. Jesus, I ask you to come in my heart and be my Lord and Savior. From here on, I offer my life to you that you will manage all my affairs according to your will. And when my time here is done, I choose to be with you in heaven forever and ever. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God is good.